Chickens are weird animals. They're great, but they're very weird. So, this afternoon, I'm gonna try and tackle this mimosa forest behind me. And I'm gonna show you why it's quite such a problem. So, mimosa, or this stuff, is actually called false acacia, I think. Um, I'll put some information up here for you. Um, so it's not actually indigenous <coughs> native to Portugal. It's a, and, and it's a very, very invasive tree. It grows like crazy. And it takes quite a lot of controlling. The reason they grow it, I think, is mostly for it, the speed in which you get usable wood. And it likes to grow really straight. Um, so yeah, I'll go show you. There you go. This is how tall it is. So it's one of the big ones. See? It's big. And that's in a year max. So yeah, it's quite a challenge keeping on top of it. It's also incredibly flammable. I'll show you that later when we have a little fire. But yeah. Everywhere, and so what tends to happen is if I can find an old stump. So this is one that I chopped down last year, and look at how many shoots have grown out of it. And these are all pretty tall as well. I've managed to stand on a few of them just to stop them from growing. So yeah, we've got a lot to do couple of big ones over there so I'm gonna get the chainsaw out so uh, yeah a bit of advice required from you guys if possible I don't want to and will not use Roundup to get rid of these things because it does a lot of damage and the animals are just there as you can see the dogs run up and down here every day chasing the foxes and it also creates quite a good little sneaky barrier for the foxes which I'm guessing is what happened last week so the internet tells me to use diesel to make a hole and put diesel in it and I don't really want to do that I don't think so what should I use how should I do it without roundup go in the comments <laughs> Bloody socks, you naughty sausage dog.
sweaty today. Spring is definitely here. So probably a good job to get all this done before it grows anymore. Because it's definitely gonna. So what you can see behind me is a result of leaving this lot too long. And I think we've inherited it through the wall from my neighbour's land. I'm not sure whether he uses it or whether he has any intention of chopping it down or whatever, but hey hope, one of those things. I'll get the lockers on the rest of this, I think. And then just like that, started raining. Excellent. Just put the washing out too. <laughs> so, so far so good clearing up here. Still got a few more bits to do. I think we'll have to do a burn with what we've got left, because this stuff's not too good in the garden. It's got something in it, I can't remember what. It's not good for the chickens either. <clears throat> so yeah, hopefully fox-proof-ish. Might give it a quick scrim once this drizzle stops. So today's a special day because Frankie gets a haircut. So we'll try and do your before and after in three, two, one. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> so, as you can tell, Frankie has lost some weight. Um, what's she on now? She's on nine six. Nine six, and she was 11 point. Yeah, maybe a bit more. So, she's lost quite a bit of weight, fair play to her. She still needs to get to 8 kilos, yeah. so she's halfway. Yeah. It's taken so. since October. <laughs> so, still going. I don't know if you guys have heard the cuckoo. It came back yesterday, day before yesterday, something like that. Um, that means we'll have four months of cuckoo soundtrack to the videos, which is always fun. There's actually a Portuguese proverb that I only heard a few days before the cuckoo came back, which is quite funny. Um, <clears throat> and it is... Em 25 de março, seu cuckoo não se ouvir, eu morto ou não quer vir. <laughs> which basically means on the 25th of March, if the cuckoo is not heard, then it's either dead or it doesn't want to come. 
<laughs> so, and it usually is like a like a, a thing for the year. So because the cuckoo has arrived early, I think it means we should have a good year. Fingers crossed. You right, Jock? Yeah. Chris has taken down the chicken coop, the old one. Something we've meant to do for a while, but because the weather's been so grim. Yeah, something we've meant to do for a while, but because the weather's been so grim, we've not got around to it. So getting on that, when I finish clearing these mimosa. Fun, fun. It's getting warm. I'm have to go and put some shorts on, I think. There was a massive one of those uh, centipede, millipede, I'm not sure which one they are, over there that bit Carissa last year. So it was massive, it was about that long. So I'm going to give that a head start and then continue. <laughs> My chickens are happy with Carissa. So next job for the day, which is becoming quite pressing and yeah, very annoying. <clears throat> you see this thing here, this lean-to, well this wall, the green one, is two sheets of corrugated stuff. One might be the dodgy asbestos panels and the other is <coughs> metal <coughs> of some sort. And the wasps love to make their nest in between them and I think last year we must have ended up with like five or six nests behind it, so there's quite a lot of quite a lot of wasps, and uh, yeah, I think I got stung every week throughout summer last year. So, and seeing as they've come early, I'm gonna have to take some of this wall down, if not the whole wall, and hopefully not get stung. I might leave it to later because it's boiling hot at the moment, and I'm gonna have to probably put loads of clothes on to do it. So, we'll see. We'll see how far I get on. Right. So we're armed with. Pair of gloves. The best respiratory thing I can find. Fine dust and aerosols. So hopefully, if there is asbestos in the in the panel, then obviously protected against that. I also have some glasses and a thick jacket in case they do decide that they're going to try and sting me, and a hammer to get the nails out. Hopefully, we don't crack the panel. So, yeah, these panels might be asbestos. They might not be. As far as I understand it, they were outlawed in the EU quite a long time ago. And from the conversations we've had from the neighbour and the person who used to own this land, all of this stuff was done in the mid to late 2000s. So, yeah, it might not be, but we're obviously going to assume that it is. So they're definitely making homes in there. I just hope they haven't got too far through making their homes that they've decided to protect them. Fingers crossed. Actually, it could be quite entertaining for them. It's quite sweaty for me because it's boiling hot. Oh, I need to put more boots on. Thank you. 
Okay. I think I was going to do this. What, is it going out? Yeah. Like this. Oh, it's very bad. I don't know. It's not going out. You try it. It's going into that thing of wood, isn't it? Mm. Like, you could do a pull up on it. Like bent it in um, anyway. Yeah. Might just have to crack it. Let's move this. God, it's hot. What are those chickens doing? No, let's move this that way. I'm not going to do that. I can just reckon I just tip it or should come when you lift it or something. I hear it too much. To do now, then. Is that? Oh, well, this that is massive. Well, well, that makes it. I wonder why he put that up as well as the metal. Yeah, it gets hot, maybe. maybe. Oh, it's not funny tail. Yeah, it's a new tail, isn't it? We'll have had the last one pulled off. Probably. Oi. Just going to give you a wall, mate, shall we? Oh, we're going to pull that one down now. Yeah, these are all the wasps' nests. Come on. There we go. Come here. So there's still a load of wasps knocking about, so I'm going to probably give them tonight before taking the rest down.
Today's video is kindly sponsored by Bluetti. If you're a regular viewer, you'll know that we're big fans of Bluetti. In fact, our entire home is powered by them. We have their AC500 with four B300S batteries in our kitchen, keeping our fridge and tap running seamlessly. Bluetti create portable power stations, backup batteries and solar panels, so you can have electricity and keep everything powered whether you live remotely and off-grid like us, if you're going on a camping trip, or in an emergency or power cut to keep your home running. The AC500 with B300S is an expandable power system. It will shift the way you harness solar energy. It's designed to help you go through power outages and stay connected to unlimited energy wherever you're headed. Thanks to the modular design, the AC500 can welcome up to six B300S expansion batteries for an overall capacity of 18,432 watt hours, covering your off-grid power needs for days. The built-in inverter delivers 5,000 watts continuous pure sine wave output and takes up to 10,000 watt surge for a short time at peak power ensuring anything you plug in will run to its full functionality and potential effortlessly. We use it for the main power source in our home and it's not skipped a beat yet and we've put it through its paces, powering our cement mixer, a jigsaw, wood chipper, grinding some coffee beans while we take a break, it can power just about anything, even high demanding appliances like hair dryers, kettles and toasters. All their power banks and batteries have multiple ways to be charged, whether that's through one of their portable solar panels, your own fixed solar panels, backup generator or AC outlet, or from a cigarette lighter in your car so it can charge whilst you're travelling. For us, Bluetti stand out in the industry for their high quality and ease of use. If you'd like to check them out, then you'll find the link in our description box below, where they currently have a spring sale which is running until the 25th of March, where you can get up to £1,300 off selected products. Thank you for Bletty for sponsoring today's video and keeping us powered. So I've just come down to the bottom of the land to do some grape pruning and yeah, a bit of a strange one. So most of these vines here, like we're at Budswell at best, nowhere near. And then this one, for some strange reason, has already gone into leaf. A strange year. Anyway, work to do.
Good morning guys, it is one of my favourite days of the year today, it is the spring equinox, we have made it through winter, spring is finally here, one of the chickens is laying an egg and making a racket, um, we have invited Nick and Andrea and Dan and Laura from Origin Homestead over for lunch today, it's a very noisy chicken, um, yeah just to celebrate and if you remember last week I told you that Ewan cracked his ribs because Dan kicked a football at him so <laughs> I'm hoping I might be able to convince him to move some pallets with me today because uh, I'm trying to encourage Ewan to not work too hard. It's tough this time of year because there's so much to do and uh, yeah he was chopping down a tree the other day and I had to tell him off <laughs> um, because he should be resting but but anyway, we're going to make a really nice lunch and I'm going to get in the garden and see what I can pick to make a nice big salad. I've boiled up a load of eggs to make some deviled eggs and Yuan's making a potato salad. Um, yeah, it should be a really nice day. Current chaos in our kitchen. Always. <laughs> what are you up to, Chef? Um, trying to find something to roast the chorizo in, so that's a bit big really. Also, please excuse my draggled look. I've just, just washed my hair. I'm hoping this sunshine that's arrived is going to dry me off. I'm going to see what I have in the main veggie garden. It's, it's a bit empty at the moment. So I've got some chard and fennel, and I think there's more salad by the raised beds. So let's see. Very red chard here. There are so many mushrooms here from the uh, donkey manure. and some pea shoots. A few bits of fennel. So that's all from this part of the garden. Beetroot leaves. Excuse me, garlic. Oh, this is some garlic chives. Okay. Here in the midst of the origami. Ooh, it's right on the middle. Let's take a bit of this green in here too. Okay, flowers are also edible. <laughs> and beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
prettiest flower in all the land. See how tall that is. Having a very warm fire, we can see why mimosa is so flammable because it <laughs> sets up yeah. very quickly. Imagine a whole forest going up like that. It, it would be terrifying and it, very hot. It would move very quickly. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. It's been painful. <laughs> yes, you probably do need to have a restful weekend. Yeah, we'll try. We will try. So, see you next week. Yep. Thanks for watching. Poke the fire. Bye. Bye. <laughs>